If you are trying to save some money, can you use the cheapest iPad as your only video editing computer? Let's find out. I had to do that twice, so hopefully it's not broken. What's up, everyone? I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. So it's no secret, I love iPads. I have too many of the darn things around my house, and I'm very impressed with this. This is the 10.2-inch iPad non-pro from 2019, and it does have an older processor, but I bet you could use this to do all, you could run an entire YouTube channel from a tablet you can find on sale for Amazon all the time for like 270, 250. This thing's insane, and today we're gonna find out, can we do it? So I actually have, spoilers, hey backup camera, I actually have everything already set up. Now to do this, you are gonna need a couple of extra devices. You'll need something besides just the base iPad. Now if you don't already have a MacBook, you don't already have an Apple computer, you'll need this. This is the SD card to lightning dongle from Apple uh, that you'll need to transfer your files from your camera if you're not using like an iPhone or you're not using the iPad itself to make it. So you'll need that and then just so that everybody can see what we're doing, we have the standard monitor setup. This is a Samsung monitor that we're gonna use today just so you can kinda see what's going on. And I do have the dongle, the HDMI dongle, because it'll make it a little easier. As you can see, we will be using a keyboard and a mouse, which is awesome since iOS 13.4, you get really good mouse and keyboard support with these things. So enough. Enough yakking, let's get going. You don't need the Apple keyboard here. Like you could get all this done without it. It just makes it a little easier. So we are gonna have to, one of the negatives about using a non-pro iPad is you can't screen record and have an external display at the same time. So you guys are gonna be able to see that from over here um, as we go through this. So we are gonna be using the LumaFusion app. That's the app that I am most comfortable with and I think is the best editing app when you use iOS. So we took the iPhone SE one month later video and we've already imported all of the footage from it. So we're gonna take that and we're gonna try to craft a little bit of a video here to see how good does it edit and how fast is the render afterwards. And as you can see, even with a $250 iPad, you can easily get mouse support and keyboard support. And that's the thing, that's one of the things that I like about iPads so much is you don't have to buy their highest end to get all of the high end features. You get most of the same features from such a, oh, I love it. I love it. Look, you get all the gestures from the Magic Mouse we can continue to scrub through the footage. I'm not seeing any like drop frames. I'm not seeing any stutters. So this is 4K 10 bit from a Lumix S1H, which is a Netflix approved camera. And it looks great. So this is, the reason it looks all washed out right now is this is called log footage, which flattens, like it flattens the image so you can get more dynamic range afterwards. And one of the cool things that we'll see here in a second is you can actually do some grading and apply some LUTs here that'll make this work better. But just as a 4K 10 bit file, uh, this is looking pretty good. I'm not seeing any dropped frames. Now, really quickly, one of the negatives about using this particular monitor is it has a headphone jack. So when I plug this in, the iPad assumes that this is the audio, but this isn't the audio because it doesn't have speakers. So what we're gonna do, just so that you can see, so that the audio would work in your normal environment, here's we've got everything set up and... After solidly using it for one month. I'm not seeing any stutters. I'm not seeing any slowdowns. That's incredible. Like an under $300 computer, no stutters. I'm not seeing a single slowdown. I'm not seeing any drop frames. That's better than the $1,000 MacBook Air with the same footage. If you remember, we did the same thing with the GH5 files of the similar type. That had stutters and drop frames. There's not a single one. I'm not seeing any problems in the scrub right here. It just, there we cut, cut, cut. Cut, nothing slowing down. I'm not seeing anything dropping. Delete, delete, delete. That's, that's impressive. Like I, that's what I love about iOS devices, whether it's the phones or the tablets. Like they're so hyper optimized that even like this kind of footage that I don't know, you go find me another sub $300 computer. And on top of that, a sub $300 computer that's as small as this iPad that can edit this footage. Like that's crazy. That's craziness. Like this is this is cheaper than the iPhone SE2 that we did the same like kind of editing test on and this has it's just great. It has an older chipset, but it's still just no no stutters, no drops, no anything. And here's so I want to show you what I was talking about. So this is log footage, right? It's very flat. Nobody's going to want to watch this, but you can install your own LUTs or there are also LUTs that LumaFusion already has in here. So this is the Vericam LUT called Nicest. It's not like 
the nicest let they made. They just call it the nicest. They've got like 35, I believe it is, lets that you can get for the, the very cam line. But you do that and then you come over here and you hit original. Then you can add a little bit of contrast to taste, a little bit of saturation, saturation to like spice. That looks pretty good. That looks usable. You, we just graded it. It's done, it's ready to go. The audio sounds good. We put the grade on it. Is there a stutter yet? No stutter, no slowdown. Okay, so this is one layer. Let's add in some B-roll. So this is some 1080p footage. If you remember that video, we did a vlogging test of the iPhone SE2. Let's see how the, boom. So now that we've got two layers, how's it working? No drops, no stutters. We switched over to the 1080p. No issues, looking good. Oh, there, it dropped. Did you see that? It did, it looks like it did drop a frame there a little bit. It's slowing down. I can see it like right here in the timeline. It is slowing down a little bit, but 4K and 1080p. Let's do another 4K file on top of it. So here's another 4K file. This 4K file is from the Lumix G9, which is 4K, 10 bit. Uh, again, so now we've got a layer of 4K, a layer of 1080p, and a layer of 4K. How's that gonna work? I'm seeing some stutters down here in the bottom. We hit this, it's stuttering a lot more on the bottom, and we're starting to get some stutters on the playback up here. Uh, but this is a lot to ask. $300 computer. That's crazy. The fact that it's working at all, like, and you could, I could still totally edit off of this. So one of the things, the way that I edit video is I edit off of these audio, the audio waveforms. So you'll learn as you're like making videos and you make all this content and you start dabbling in video that it's just faster, especially if you're trying to explain something like right now, just to see like, okay, I know how I talk so I can cut off of that. So here, can we cut, cut, cut there. Now we've cut all that out, cut, cut. We can delete the main clip, which deletes all three clips. Yeah, that still, it's still cutting. We're still scrubbing okay. In playback, we are having some issues because we've got so much data in here, but it's still playing back. Like I am impressed. And you can see here, here's the audio sound since we can't actually hear it. Um, but you can see that the audio is still working on all three channels. Now, this audio is garbage. We would never use that. This audio, we wouldn't necessarily want to use for right here because it's not part of what I'm actively trying to tell in this story, but this looks, it looks totally usable. Like it is totally usable. So we've been able to import the footage. We've been able to grade the footage. We've been able to add three layers of footage. <sighs> okay, let's add some B-roll. Just let's see if we can break. Let's see if we can break the iPad today. So here's some, here's some B-roll. So now we've got lots of stuff on here. There's some B-roll of the iPhone SE2. You can't, I mean, it's definitely, you can definitely tell the stutters and the slowdowns, but it's doing it. It's doing it. I'm, I love this. I love, anytime we make a video like this, it's all, I feel like there's always so much hyperbole. I'm so amped about this, but it's just so impressive that you don't need to go out and buy the iPad Pro. You don't need to go out and buy the MacBook Pro. You don't need to go out and buy the iMac Pro. You don't have to buy one of Apple's Pro devices to start getting into the Apple ecosystem and to be able to create quality content. Like these are things that would not have been possible just a few years ago, and this is crazy. So, yep, we got B-roll, it works. Can we start adding some titles? Let's add a transition or two. There, we'll cut again. So much iOS 13.4 with the mouse support is really, I, I hate calling things a game changer, but it is kind of a game changer. So we'll, nope, go back. Let's add a transition. Transition, so how's the transition going? I'm so used to Final Cut Pro where I can hit space bar and it plays. So that's why I keep hitting the space bar. Transition worked perfectly fine. Let's add some text. Overlay title. Let's say something cool. You just double click on that and it opens up. Your text here. What should we type? Something about 30 frames per second is still the best frame rate around. 24 FPS isn't. Take that, filmmakers. It's a joke. It's totally a joke. So we've added a title. How's the title looking? Looks good. No, I, I cannot get over. It's so cheap and look, oh man, man. Okay, 
So let's go over to the five minute mark. We're gonna cut at five minutes. So you can see right here, we've got lots of B-roll, we've got the main file. So let's see how the render's gonna go. That's gonna be, I mean, we can see right now, we've already proven that you can cut it, but video editing is in two parts. There's the editing and then the rendering. So we've seen that we can easily, easily cut the footage. So let's export it and see how long it takes. We want a movie, we don't just want audio. You could use this to edit like podcasts or stuff like that. So we'll just do photos. We'll do 4K, 30 frames per second, video quality ultra. No, we'll just, we don't wanna, we'll go to standard. Standard is about what you would get out of like Final Cut Pro X. So we'll do standard, which is 50 megabits per second. That'll still look really good. Audio quality, we'll keep it the same. It says it's gonna be a two gigabyte file. Our space needed is gonna be four gigabyte, okay. So like I said, about a Final Cut Pro X size, five minute video, let's export it and see how long it's gonna take. So let's get the, let's get the stopwatch ready. So you guys can see the stopwatch. Ready, get set, go. It's writing movie. It's going a little, it's going slower than the iPhone, I think. But I think it's still going, yeah, we're going about half the speed of real time, it looks like. One of the nice things about the iPad Pro is it's so powerful, it renders faster than real time. So if a video clip is five minutes, it will render it in less than five minutes. I'm not gonna make you guys sit here and wait this whole time. So through the magic of video editing, I'll wait here with nothing to do because I'm using my iPad and my phone. And uh, hooray, you guys don't have to wait. Okay, we're not quite done yet, but something I do wanna point out is, listen, you can't hear anything, right? Like one of the nice things about rendering or even working on an iPad is it's not loud. There's no fans that spin up. It's, it's getting a little warm, but it's not like crazy hot. Editing on the iPad has a lot of benefits other than it's crazy cheap. And we are going a little bit slower than real time. So see back in what, six minutes? Okay, and we're back. So we are just, can you see? We are just about done. We've only got about 10 seconds of video that needs to be rendered left. So the five minute video there, we're done. It took eight minutes and 50 seconds to render a five minute 4K clip. So what does that mean? This thing, this sub $300 computer edited and rendered a 4K project faster and better than a MacBook Air that costs what, three times the amount? The iOS devices, especially the iPad OS devices are some of the most powerful you're gonna find. So the question was, can you use the cheapest iPad as your only editing computer? The answer is yes. Easily yes. You saw we were able to cleanly scrub through the files. We were able to edit very quickly. We were able to grade professional level log footage. Like that's Netflix approved quality from an S1H and we're able to export that at a little bit slower than real time. Faster than a laptop that costs three times more. So yes, you could use this iPad as your only editing computer. It's crazy impressive. It's crazy impressive. And if you liked this video, if you do wanna spend a little bit more and get an iPad Pro, and you wanna see how that edits, which it renders so fast, you can find that video by clicking right here. Click, 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 click. Thanks for watching.